All right, everybody, this is going to be an ambitious video. 10 languages discussed, just to give you an overview, because people are always asking me, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? What do you think of C++? What do you think of C? What do you think of Python? What do you think of Ruby? What do you think of Swift? So I'm going to give you a quick overview of, I don't know, about 10 languages now, super quick so you understand how they're used, what type of business, what type of work that they do, so you can make a decision as to what you want to focus in at this particular moment in time. So we'll start off with C, C++. These are lower level languages. What do I mean by lower level? Meaning they're closer to the CPU. What does that mean? It means basically they run really, really fast. So people use C and C++ to create either uh, little apps that control devices like watches or thermostats or something, devices that don't have a lot of horsepower, don't have a lot of CPU, so you need a very fast, efficient language. So when you're writing C, C++ code, you're writing for those kind of devices. You may be writing a gaming engine, like the, I think, the Unreal Engine or something, or whatever it is. There's all these gaming engines. Any type of very high-performance program will be written in these languages. So these languages are not great for freelancers. These languages are for people who want to work for a company. These are languages that are used to build software that is not client facing. What does that, what does that mean? That means that these are, you're going to be writing software that's not actually, people don't interact with. There's going to be no views typically. One of the exceptions, you know, they would write apps like uh, Adobe Photoshop or something in C++, but you would have to go work at Adobe or something. So you understand C++, C, you're working for big companies, big corporations, usually for high performance requirement, uh, required programs and apps, okay? All right, let's get into the next one, Java. Java was invented to make it easier to write code, easier than C++. There's a bunch of things, a bunch of bookkeeping, a bunch of things you have to manage with C++ that you don't have to manage with Java. The downside with Java is that it is slow compared to C++. It runs really slow, but for many, many types of apps, many business apps, Java runs plenty fast and it's plenty capable. What the big advantage with Java is that it's easier to write in some respects in C++ and it gets the job done faster, especially for type of apps like web apps and stuff. You would have read a web app in C++, you could, but it would be, it'd be crazy. It would take you forever to do it. You do it in Java much, much quicker, much quicker indeed. Java is also used in Android development as well, although that might be fading because there's a new nimbler, faster language called Kotlin, I think it is, that uh, Google has endorsed and it's, it's easier and faster to write with Kotlin over Java. So Java may fade in terms of being used to create apps for Android devices. But today, Java is used hugely for legacy apps, uh, legacy apps that are web-based and server-based, again, working for very large corporations. And the most popular framework, which is basically a giant library, loose, loosely, it's a library, it's called Spring. So if you're doing Java, you're probably going to be doing Java Spring with the Spring framework, or you might be doing Java for Android development. There's other uses for Java, but those are, I think, the dominant uses. So Java, again, easier to write in some certain respects, advanced C, C++, but it runs much slower, but it also has more flexibility in other ways as well, since you can just write things really, really quickly. All right, let's jump into Python. Python, general purpose language. You think Java runs slow? Woohoo! Python runs really slow. Nonetheless, Python is really easy to learn, really easy to write, easier than Java. So C, eh, it's kind of abstract, super fast, but it's hard. You got to write a lot of code and take care of a lot of bookkeeping if you want to get anything done. C++, a little easier, a little faster. Uh, not faster, but faster to write, but still, still super fast when it's running. Java, much slower, but easier to write. Uh, thing with C++ and C, when you write that code, it's for one platform. So you write an app in C++, it runs on Windows, doesn't run on Mac. You're gonna have to rewrite it for Mac, blah, 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 blah. With Java, the theory is you write it once, Java, it runs all over the place, on Mac, on Windows, wherever it runs. That's one of the advantages of Java. Python, pretty much the same thing as well. It runs on different operating systems, Linux, Windows, Mac, etc. It's used a lot in machine learning, robotics, 
It's used in web scraping, server automation. It's one of those general purpose languages, meaning it's used all over the place. Easy to learn, the syntax, the code that you actually write is actually pretty readable, pretty human readable, much easier to get going with Python than it is with Java, but it's very slow at runtime. But computers are so fast these days, and for certain types of applications, like certain aspects of machine learning, certain ap aspects of AI, certain uh, web apps, it's plenty fast, it does the job. Let's we'll switch over, next language, JavaScript, JavaScript, oh, not related to Java in any way. It is a uh, different type of language. It's a, it's a scripting language. What does that mean? It's uh, kind of more of a lightweight language, so you can get stuff even faster. JavaScript was invented to add programming capabilities to web browsers, invented around the same time as Java in 1995, 94, something like that. I think it was 95. And uh, Java has now been transported, moved to, to server with this engine called Node.js. So JavaScript actually runs really fast and it's used for, uh, re does a really good job with messaging systems. So it's used quite a bit there. JavaScript was one of those essential languages. If you're doing web stack, you're learning JavaScript in some form or another. So that's another language you could choose. And you're looking at Java, you're looking at writing client-facing web apps. That's what it is. You could also use it to create mobile apps used with the help of the React Native library. Uh, but I don't want to go into too many details, but now you know what JavaScript basically does. You're doing the web, and it's uh, more client-oriented type of code as opposed to writing uh, the code that manages a clock. That's what C or C++ would do. Okay, let's talk, jump to the next language, PHP. PHP is a server-side programming, scripting language, and it get, gets a lot of bad press because of old versions of PHP. Let me just say for the record, today PHP 7 Plus is just as capable as any other programming language, and I would say for freelance developers, web developers rather, it is the language. PHP is used 99% of the time to do web app, web app development. So Facebook is created with PHP as an example. That's probably the biggest example. So PHP can produce huge apps, but it's used quite a bit. I think 80 to 90, well, 80 odd percent of business websites are run on PHP. Think about it, 80%. Big part of that reason is because WordPress is created with, with uh, PHP. WordPress is, Joomla is, Drupal is, they're all created with PHP. And so many shopping cart systems, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, are created with PHP. So PHP is huge. So if you want to do freelancing, you want to build small apps, PHP, I think, is the best choice because of not just the fact that it's easy to approach, it's very powerful, it's very refined at this point, but it runs really fast. Like in terms of runtime, in terms of when it runs, PHP is far faster than Python, far faster than uh, Ruby, which is another language that's used for create web apps. So PHP is another option that you have open to you. All right, let's talk about Swift. Apple Swift. Apple came up with the Swift language, I believe, in 2014. And why did they come up with Swift? They wanted a light, nimble language, which is kind of Python-like. Not exactly like Python, but it's Python-like in that it's light, nimble, easy to read. Uh, they wanted something to replace their old Objective-C. Objective-C is kind of a flavor of C. And it's heavy duty, it could be a pain in the butt to program Objective-C. So this is for writing iOS apps and macOS apps. So they came up with Swift, which is their uh, answer to writing really fast, uh, to write apps really quickly for iOS or for macOS. Now here's the thing. Uh, two important things about Swift. Swift was open sourced by Apple, meaning anybody can start contributing to it. So IBM took it up, and now IBM is doing some pretty cool stuff using Swift to create uh, services-based, server-side services. You have to go look that up. Basically, IBM is looking at a new style of web app using Swift as the backbone. Why Swift? Because it's easy to write, etc. But here's the cool thing about Swift. It's super fast. It's nearly as fast as C++. So that means Swift at runtime is faster than, much faster than Java, much faster than PHP, much faster than Ruby, much faster than Python, much, much faster than JavaScript probably. I would have to check that, but it runs super, super fast. So that's the advantage. Swift on the server is still kind of very niche right now. It's just beginning, and who knows if it's actually going to go anywhere. I'm recording this in 2018. So right now, if you learn Swift, you're basically just doing iOS apps for, for it. But nonetheless, it is out there. All right, SQL. 
SQL is kind of a strange language. It's, it's a four GL language, fourth generation language, GL generation language. SQL is the language of relational databases, the most popular type of database out there. There are many relational databases out there. There's MySQL server, there's Microsoft SQL server or SQL server, there's Oracle, there's Postgre, many, many SQL based databases or other words otherwise called relational databases. SQL is the universal language of these databases and SQL is used to actually talk to da databases. It's used to send request to databases, update the databases, read from the database, delete records from the database. It's a simple language. It's actually designed to be easy to read and write, it reads like human. So, uh, and the four basic operations of SQL language is um, CRUD, it's create, read, update, delete. These are four operations. These are four things you do to databases. Remember, a database is just a program that holds information, stores information. It's a base of data. Data is a nerd word for information. So CRUD is create. You create a record. You know, you store, hey, this guy bought uh, two apples. You read a record. You read from the database. How many apples did he buy? You update the record. He's going to buy an extra two apples. And you delete the record. He's not going to buy any apples. He's had enough. So that's the CRUD operations. So you see that, like in my course, I have a CRUD course. I teach you how to do those basics. And guess what? The vast majority of time when you're dealing with apps, web apps especially, any client-facing apps, apps that people interact with, you're storing the information at some point. You gotta save it, right? Somebody creates a, uh, a document, somebody uh, cr creates an order on Amazon, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This information has to be saved. A lot of the times, it's saved to a relational database. And that's where SQL comes in. So if you're doing any type of web programming, there's a 99% chance you're going to learn SQL. Great thing about SQL, you don't have to be a super wizard in it. And uh, it's actually pretty easy to uh, learn. The last language you're going to cover, and there's so many other languages, but uh, this is the last language you're going to cover because I think these are the ones you're going to mostly run into. C Sharp. C Sharp is a Microsoft language for the Microsoft.NET platform. You use Microsoft C Sharp, to write things like web apps using ASP.NET, which is their framework for writing web apps. So uh, if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. Basically, C Sharp could be used to write web apps. It could be used to write Microsoft apps for Windows. It could be used to um, create games and engines. I think certain engines will allow you to write games with C Sharp. I forget the name of the engine. You can look, I think Unity is the name. I don't do that kind of programming, so I'm not too familiar with it. So C Sharp is another viable option. C Sharp is a language that freelance gigs, again, maybe doing some freelance web apps with uh, ASP.NET and C Sharp, uh, mostly learn, but I think with C Sharp, like so many of the other languages, you're going to be working for a company typically. But C Sharp, it's kind of a general purpose language, but I think it's mainly, mainly if you're doing work with Microsoft products, and that's it. Whereas Java, we, does, we discussed that. PHP is the king for freelance. Oh, I'll talk about Ruby quickly. Ruby is a, a clever little language, about 20 years old as well, and uh, it's used largely for web app creation using the Rails framework, but it's slowly falling into niche. There's still jobs, high paying jobs with Ruby. Ruby is a great language. I'm not critical of any of these languages technically, by the way. They all have their strengths and their weaknesses, and they all have their use cases, meaning there are certain places where Ruby would do better and certain places where PHP would do better. But the fact of the matter is Ruby had its heyday in the uh, mid-2000s, I think, 2007, 2008. That's when it peaked, and it's been on a slow decline because all the new hipster nerds are moving into JavaScript, and PHP is super dominant for the small business space. 80% of websites, dynamic sites, are powered by PHP. For enterprise or big, huge organizations, you're either looking at ASP.NET, C Sharp, or you're looking at Java. So uh, for machine learning, you're looking at Python, uh, maybe if, yeah, for Python, and you're maybe C, C++ for machine learning, where they, they create the engines in C++ and then they they work with Python to do that. So much information in this vlog, but it was just designed to give you a quick overview so you understand where each of these languages stand in the marketplace. When you're looking at a language, you're looking at any technology, don't just consider the technical nerd arguments. Try to consider 
the lifestyle arguments. What does this language do for your life? Where does it take you in terms of the type of work, job, or business opportunities? I hope that helps. Bye-bye.